What's going on, people? It's Andrew back again with another video, and today we have an unboxing and first look review of the HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook. Now, we took a look at the HP Dragonfly Pro Windows variant, very high-end, very premium. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you didn't catch that video, check it out again, link in the description below. But I also have its Chromebook counterpart, and I know that HP has been working very closely with Google regarding this device. It's a very high-end, well built machine that has excellent audio a really high res display it's absolutely gorgeous it's super bright and it also has that premium build quality that we don't normally see on a chromebook throw in the fact that it can run linux android apps natively and i think you know the deal folks this is not your grandma's chromebook this is a really great machine for productivity great for consuming media and a great overall premium design we're going to get into it and more in this video hey everybody it's andrew and this is the HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook here for 2023 coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from HP. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. The HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook comes in at $999. It's available in ceramic white and what I have here today, sparkling black. It comes with a 12th gen Intel processor, Intel Iris XE graphics, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 14 inch QHD plus touch display that can get as bright as 1200 nits. We're gonna get into it now. And without further ado, let's find out what you get inside the box. So pretty nice box here, of course, with HP branding. Feels pretty nice, a little bit of half. This is a very premium package, of course, and a premium product. And just like the Windows version of the Dragonfly Pro, we also get a 96 watt charger with the flip out prongs. Very nice to get a high wattage charger here. Let's put that to the side. We get a braided cable with a matching color, which is nice, USB-C, and that's it for the box. And then of course you get the unit itself. And wow, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. As you can see here, full metal, all metal design. It says Chromebook there. It has the beautiful HP logo that we know. And as you can see, this is absolutely gorgeous. It does show fingerprints. Now we took a look at the white version on the Windows laptop that we looked at, the HP Dragonfly Pro. This is the black. So this will show more fingerprints. It's already collecting fingerprints. So let's see if we can open this with one finger. We certainly can. This is what the design looks like and you can see it here, really nice. Keyboard feels good. Now let's check out the weight, 1.51 pounds or 3.54 pounds on this scale. So a little bit less weight than the HP Dragonfly Pro running Windows that we looked at, but it's still a little bit on the heavy side for a 14 inch, not really terrible, certainly portable enough to take with you on the go. Okay, let's check out the port selection. You have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. They are full function supporting data charge and display out. These are of course on the left side, Bang & Olufsen branding there. And you get two more USB Type-C ports. These are also Thunderbolt. So very, very good in terms of having connectivity, especially for a Chromebook. But of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that it doesn't have a headphone jack. And as far as any user upgradability, well, not good news here. You can pretty much forget about it. The RAM, the SSD, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, it's all soldered into the motherboard. So don't even bother opening it up. 
Now, as far as the keyboard is concerned, excellent job here done by HP. It's got a Chromebook layout, of course, and I felt like the key travel was good. The tactility was excellent and the feedback was really good. I never felt like my fingers were going to bottom out. Very comfortable for typing for extended periods of time. Looking good so far. Again, I'll do more testing of that in my full review. Now, it does have RGB backlighting on this, although I haven't really played with it all that much, to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of RGB backlighting. Even on gaming laptops, I don't really care for it but that's just me but some people might like it some people might find it odd that it does have rgb backlighting but again you can control how that goes again i just stick with the basic white on it and i have no issue in terms of the backlighting it worked well especially in a dark room and especially with this sparkling black now one thing to note the ceramic white might have some issues like i did with the white version on the windows variant as it's sometimes hard to see the contrast between the white led and the white white keys so just keep that in mind but not an issue with the sparkling black now, in addition to the keyboard, you're looking at a really nice haptic touchpad. And I love the fact that this haptic engine is super responsive when it comes to scrolling, when it comes to gestures, everything works really well, super sensitive. I mean, it's really, really on point here. I like what they did here. Love having this haptic touchpad here. Really no complaints so far. Of course, I need to do my full testing, but so far, this is looking really good. I, whatever tuning they did as far as the haptics on this, Keep it up, HP. Looking good. Okay, let's talk about the star of the show without a doubt, and that would be the 14-inch QHD Plus display. It has a resolution of 2560 by 1600. We're looking at a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, and it can get as bright as 1200 nits. Folks, this has got to be the brightest display I've seen on any laptop to date. That's saying a lot because I review a lot of laptops, as you know, and this has got to be the brightest. It is vibrant. It is sharp. It's got great color accuracy, excellent coverage of the color gamut. I'm kind of surprised they didn't put this one on the Windows variant because that would have been amazing, although I don't know what it would do to battery life. But as far as this one is concerned on this Chromebook, it is by far the best display in a Chromebook I have seen. So that has been pretty great. It's also a multi-touch display, so you can navigate the OS with your finger. It's uh, really good for pinch to zoom and stuff like that. Now, keep in mind that there is no pen support on this. So if you want to use a pen, not in the cards, although it is a clamshell, not a convertible. So it kind of makes sense. There's no pen support, but having the ability to use the multi-touch on it is really good. I think it's a nice convenient feature to have, and I'm glad it's here. And it goes without saying, consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube has been great on this. Watching movies on this has been superb with this excellent display. No qualms about it. It's got great color accuracy, great coverage of the color gamut. It's got really great contrast. Everything you'd want in a display is here. It's got deep blacks. It's all there, folks. So this is the camera on the HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook here in 2023, a brand new device, a very premium device, as I mentioned. And this is the world's first eight megapixel camera in a Chrome OS device. So that is a pretty interesting feat as it's great video quality. And what do you think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comment section below. I think this is a good solution. Obviously, this is a very high-end camera that we don't normally see on a Chromebook, let alone any other laptop for that matter. Eight megapixels is nothing to sneeze at. What do you think about this 1080p resolution? Let me know in the comment section below. Now this is running the Core i5-1235U. We've seen that processor before. Yes, plenty last year. It's from Intel, it's their 12th gen, and it is a very good processor. It's got 10 cores, eight efficiency cores, two performance cores, and as you know, the performance is gonna be very good. And especially for Chrome OS, which doesn't really require all that much, this is gonna perform really well for the productivity task, whether it be office documents and stuff like that, or whether you're consuming media or whether you're doing editing of any sort like photo editing or any kind of even video editing if you want to do that on chrome os it is more than adequate here on this computer on this laptop uh this chromebook so that has been pretty good now of course it's got built-in graphics so don't expect to it to be the greatest thing ever but the performance so far my initial use of it has been really good so i'm not disappointed in that at all you've also got 16 gigabytes of lp ddr5 
RAM. It is running in dual channel mode. It is soldered into the motherboard. It's not upgradable and neither is the storage. Now I have 256 gigs of NVMe SSD storage. That's been certainly fast enough on this in terms of transferring files and so forth very fast. So very good to see that on this Chromebook as well. All right, let's check out the quad speakers on this. They've sounded really good so far, maybe a little bit better than the Windows variant, but let's give it a listen and let's compare it to the best in the business, which in my opinion is of course the MacBook Pro 14. Let's compare the two. Wow, that was a pretty tough one in terms of picking a winner. I got to say, congratulations, HP, on doing such a great job here. Fantastic job in terms of the sound, giving the MacBook Run a Pro a run for the money, although maybe slightly better the MacBook Pro in a little bit more bass, but the volume, the mids, the overall sound on this HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook is excellent. Great job. And I definitely think it sounds a little bit better than the Windows variant. So whatever tuning they did on this Chromebook, it certainly paid off. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, they're claiming 11 and a half hours on a single charge. I still have to do my full testing, of course, but I will bring that to you very soon. And it supports rapid charge, giving you 50% in only 30 minutes. And the included 96 watt power adapter, USB-C, certainly gives you that rapid charge, not something we normally see on a Chromebook. And I think you've been hearing this quite a bit as far as this Chromebook is concerned. Uh, things you're just not normally seeing Again, high-end features with a lot of premiumness to this and a lot of these great features we want to see. And with the Chromebook, of course, you get the Play Store, so you can install Android apps and so forth, and we'll be able to do that here. You could also install Linux on this. We'll do a distro of that. And then, of course, you have the Chrome browser here as your native browser operating in this Chrome OS, of course. And so this is going to be good for uh, browsing and doing whatever you need. And the speed has been great so far. And then, of course, if you want to go to my channel here, you go to my channel, and there it is. So really, really good so far in terms of the responsiveness and you can see here again a very glossy but you can see here how responsive this touchpad is so far and again the haptic feedback the haptic engine is working pretty good and just like the Windows variant, you're going to get the 24-7 support that HP has been touting. It's $10.99 a month, free for the first 12 months if you purchase this HP Dragonfly Chromebook or the Dragonfly Pro as well. So that is pretty good. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section below. Okay, people, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook? My initial impression is it is a pretty excellent device. It's got a gorgeous QHC Plus display. It's certainly the brightest display I've seen so far. It is that good. Vibrant colors, very sharp, and it is excellent for consuming media. Love that. Love the fact that it has a multi-touch display, but it doesn't have pen support. Just keep that in mind. And again, 1,200 nits, simply stunning. Runs pretty cool and quiet so far. The Bang & Olufsen Tune quad speakers are excellent. It's got four Thunderbolt 4 ports, excellent keyboard and haptic touchpad. So far, 
far really good. Eight megapixel webcam, the first on a Chrome OS device. That's been pretty good. Very good performance so far out of this Core i5, 1235U. Unfortunately, no headphone jack, soldered RAM, SSD, Wi-Fi. That is a little bit of a negative in my book, of course. No SD card reader, no HDMI, although you have the four Thunderbolt 4 ports, so that certainly makes up for that. No high refresh rate option, and there's no UHD Plus or 4K Plus option, although I don't think you need it here. Battery life so far has been pretty good. Of course, I need to do my full testing as I look at this long term. So we'll get that all in the upcoming full review. Stay tuned. That will be coming very soon. But my initial impressions right off the bat, very impressed with this Chromebook. And it certainly is not your grandma's Chromebook anymore. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.